This is a hybrid. This is a cross, uh, a bluegrass, Kentucky bluegrass uh, featherbed bent, and uh, Northern California sensimia. The amazing stuff about this is that you can play 36 holes on it in the afternoon, take it home, and just get stoned to the bejesus belt that night on this stuff. Good morning to the Merrimack Valley as we welcome to the best hour machine gun radio, the J Mac and the Bear Show. The J Mac and the Bear Show is brought to you by Allen Ack Mortgage Group and Michael G. Conway Insurance. I'm John McDonald along with the Bear, my co host, Mr. George the Harulis. I encourage you, our listeners, to call at 978 454 4980 and talk to us live here on 980 AM WCAP where everybody gets it. We're a show where week to week we will discuss everything from local, state, and national politics. And our very special guest today is Mary Burns from the Highlands, uh, one of the top people in the Republican ranks. Oh, she's clearly the top, top Republican oh, please. In, in the city uh, of I'm Lowell. Mary from the Highlands. Ma- Mary, the top Republican, uh, known in many circles as You're the... trying to steal my thunder, is that well, it? Well, no, I'm just, I'm yeah, just yeah. clarifying. Okay. Go ahead. George continues. You took it all away. <laughs> <laughs> is that all you had? <laughs> well, she's just a lovely person. Oh, well, she all. is. I didn't say that. See, you're Thank adding you. more. Good you're morning, everybody. More. Good morning. How are you? Great. How are you? Good. we got to ask you straight up. Um, are you a Donald Trump supporter? Yes. Yes. And why? Because he beats the alternative. And I think it's a shame what the media has done, not just to Donald Trump, and to everyone else, but what they've done to this country and to the people of this country. They were given a right back when this country was formed, you know, freedom of the press for a reason, and that was to sort out this kind of crapola coming out of the Hillary Clinton camp, and they've done nothing but join her. And it's supposed it's to be the fourth branch of the government yep. in, a, in, a, in a way, and they have not. Um, but I'm not saying every media source. No, I'm not talking, I'm talking about, you national. Know, national. I'm talking, the national news media is clearly in the tank. It's proven. Uh, this WikiLeaks thing is, is is proven how rigged the system is. I mean, look at we just got through the Democratic National Convention where they lost their chairwoman because of corruption and because of the of 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 the fraud. An emphasis of supporting a campaign, which they shouldn't have. They should not have supported Hillary campaigns. They did everything they could to eliminate a candidate who might might have won and could have been the Democrat nominee. But what did he do, though? I mean, that's the part that he knuckled, I think he knuckled on. Yeah, I think the cause, the cause, or the movement left the man. Because I think that that that, it, that still exists. I think Bernie Sanders is a sellout now, and um, I think it's a shame that 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 he didn't stand uh, up for what he fought for. Instead, he took uh, took a, 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 a you know nice mortgage out on a which I'm sure is being paid for by some political pack uh, by the by the uh, lake up there in Vermont. And uh, you know what? If the Democrats take over the uh, the the uh, the Senate, well, he'll probably be in charge of some, Speaker. you know, big committee uh, that will uh, negatively impact the, the budget uh, committee. Yeah, the budget committee will negative negatively impact the country for for years to come, uh, or at least put it into gridlock, which it's been for the last pretty much thirty years anyway. I mean, mean you know, I mean, I th- and I think in essence that's what this presidential election has represented to the American people. Whether you like Trump or you don't like Trump, it's the fact that people are outraged and disgusted that nothing has happened from both sides, from both sides in the last 30 years. I think it's quite apparent that Donald Trump, he's no saint. We know that. But he's a hundred times better than her. She's a, I'm, I'm sorry, she should be in jail because if that was anyone else in this country doing what she has done, we all would have been in jail. There's no question about it. There's absolutely no question about uh, when you th- look at the manipulation of the FBI, you look at the manipulation of the State Department, when you have the uh, head of the State Department and the a, a former president of the United States happens to be her spouse meeting secretly on a plane. Sorry, this jigs up. It's not so much a secret anymore. But when they first met, it was it was all about the secret. Um, when you have the FBI working on behalf of this administration uh, and um, – 
allowing simple things. Look at three, all three of us. If we had our cell phones and the FBI rushed into the studio and said, "Give me, give me your cell phones," um, and you turned around, Mary, and you smashed it on the floor and you crushed it, and you it's, you'd be in jail. That's what the Clintons did, right? Took, but not just their own. It was like several. Uh, right. electronic devices, smashed. And then they said, you know what, Mary? We're going to go to your house and we're going to grab your computer. And you say, you know what? You know what, you know what, Mr. FBI Director? You know, I'll mail it to you. You think the FBI is going to say, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. You know what? Mail it to us. Yeah. This is what's happened. The corruption has been proven. And the Clinton administration and the team around them, including the Obama administration, want to say, don't believe your lying eyes. Don't believe what you see. Their defense to these WikiLeaks emails as well, it was hacked by the Russians. We know there's no proof that the Russians right. hacked hacked her, her stuff. There's no proof that the Russians are involved with this at all. This is the biggest fraudulent election we've ever seen. And I'm not going to tell you that I stand here today and tell you that Donald Trump is a wonderful guy either. Or that I don't like him as the messenger. I'll be perfectly honest. But I like the message, met much of the message. Which is with twenty trillion dollars in debt, we have nothing to show for it. Our infrastructure is in abysmal shape. Right. We have t- not the best education that, you, that 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 we should have. We should have the best of everything at twenty trillion dollars in debt. We got nothing to show for it. The economy is is, is the underpinnings of the economy are so fragile. That there's nowhere for the Fed to go uh, on, on, on interest rates if we have another economic collapse. Correct. The, we have a military that has been underfunded for such a long time, that is undermanned, uh, that is at critically low levels in fa- as far as the ability to respond to a national crisis we have issue after issue with manufacture people out of work still after seven and a half years of the obama administration people still out of work with no prospects for jobs because the jobs are overseas and our trade deals are horrible do i agree with everything donald trump says absolutely not but i do i agree with him when he says that our inner cities that we have problems with our inner cities and that African-American neighborhoods in some of these inner cities are in trouble because there's no prospects for jobs. There's violence and people are getting killed on the streets every day. Barack Obama's own home neighborhood, these things happen every day. And that people are being left behind. You don't see the Democrat, the progressive Democrats or even any of the Democratic Party having any solutions that have worked over the last 30 years to bring those people up. All right. It's so we've got serious problems in this country. Uh, terrorism. Is like number one, one A. Uh, we never have to, to worry how, about that. And no, now we have to. Now we have I to mean, worry where we about. Go, it. We have to look around. And, we never thought about that growing up. And you have a, a you have Hillary Clinton, who, if elected, will open the spigot. The board, she wants open borders, and will do nothing to combat terrorism on the homeland. I mean, it's it it's 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 frightening, in the way that we are going about. Sending out information, ABC, NBC, Washington Post, Boston Globe, the New York Times, on LA Times, on and on and on and on, have been proven in writing, don't believe your own eyes, have been proven in emails to be working to destroy Trump and promote Hillary. I have never, ever in all my years heard of a reporter sending a news piece to a political campaign to have them edit it and then send it back to us so we can print it. What is that? They should be ashamed it's of themselves. It's called fraud. It's called it manipulation. It's called corruption. That's exactly what it is. But as the Clintons tend to do, right. they, and they, redefi- they redefine the process and, 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 and redefine the language of which most ethically or moral people have lived by. Mm-hmm. Because what does that tell you? They're not moral or ethic, ethical. And I'm going to say that probably 99% of this, the people in this country live by the rule of law. Yeah. But they just seem to think that they are above it and us. And how anyone can vote for Hillary Clinton is beyond me. If you have children in your life, you have grandchildren in your life, you have a neighbor who's a child in your life, look at them in the eyes and say you can actually vote for Hillary Clinton and turn this country over to her. You can't. 
You literally can't do it. Look at the open disdain in black and white. John Podesta and the Clinton <laughs> campaign against Catholics mm-hmm. in this country. Against Catholics. They're standing by radical Islamic terrorists right. under the auspices of that they're not, you know, that they're not Muslims. It's part of the Muslim religion. I hate to tell you, folks. I mean, not all Muslims are, are this way, but they are supporting them over and, and, and criticizing Catholics. Catholics, and Christians, want, and, Hispanics. And, 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 and want to excoriate. All friends of color. Catholics. I mean, disgusting. Uh, Hispanics. On and on and on. Not just in theory. In writing. In writing, in black and white, in writing, and they're telling you to ignore it because the Russians hacked. I, I mean, I don't even. I, I, it, it defies common sense logic, but they're spinning it, and they got their fourth arm helping them in the national news media: ABC, NBC, MSNBC, CBS, CNN. And I'm not convinced either, by the way, that this race is over. Donald Trump has an hour and a half tonight. What's to, he gonna what's he gonna do tonight, Mary? What's he gonna do tonight that's gonna make a difference? He has to come out his base is solid, we all know that. He's getting twenty thousand people at a rally. Still. And I've worked on political campaigns for years and trying to get a hundred people is tough. But when you open the door and twenty thousand people show up, that's huge. And a waiting okay. line outside. Right. So what does he do tonight? He needs to toss Hillary aside and talk issues and just put it right to the American yeah. public. It's his only shot. It's his last shot to get to the undecided voter, and that's tonight. Well, it's his only unscripted right. uh, or unmanipulated opportunity because the second that debate's over, they're going to take all of the, the, the coverage of that debate and twist it and cut it and, and redistribute it. Now, look at Again, he is a flawed candidate. There's no question about it. But it's a choice between... Someone who is perceived to be flawed, someone who's perceived to have problems, or someone who has actually got bona fide, credible evidence of... Look, who else could get away with in this country of saying, can we drone Julian Assange? Hmm. Can Donald we drone Trump, him? Which Donald means, Trump couldn't get away with it. By the way, it's coded. It means, can we go kill him Correct. and get him out of the way? Right. Right? Um, Bob Beckett was a CNN, Hillary Clinton progressive left-wing nut right said dead man don't speak that's right right dead men don't speak they need to get to julian such openly and john Kerry had them you know kind of silence him temporarily i'm sure there's going to be emails coming out without the ecuadorian uh email Internet system. access yeah but i'll tell you right now we cannot elect her we just can't well the corruption is is i'm tired of it palpable but the the Obama administration has done everything they can to 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 ensure that they can dictate to all branches of the government. Do you think it's going to get worse or better under a Hillary Clinton presidency? The answer is clearly a lot worse. It's going to get worse, and it's them and the rest of us. Which I mean, it's a we fought the British get away from a monarchy, right? This can is you- exactly what we, we we've become. Can, you know, we all know what the Clinton Foundation is, and that's full of corruption. They sold this country and its people down the river for their own personal financial gain. That's fact. They, it, what's proven it's in all fact, that is right. they don't care about anybody. No. But themselves. They don't can care you who they imagine? kill, who's on their side. They don't even care about the people on their side. Can you imagine what the Obama Foundation is going to be? I, I, it's, I, I can't. I just it's, cannot believe what's going on in this country, that everyone is working against the American public. Well, I can't. It, it, if it was you and me again, or George, we'd all be in jail. Well, it, it goes to show that a lot of that money, albeit some of it is coming from the United States, a large, vast majority of it's coming from foreign governments yeah. through the Clinton Foundation to manipulate, change, get access to whatever it is. And the uh, Clintons don't care as long they as the, as long as the the, the 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 cash is in their pockets or the check is clearing, they really don't. They don't care. They don't care what secrets we give up. All we're going back to the, the nuclear secrets to North Korea, to the to the to giving Russians access to uh, precious metals, and 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 in the United States. And uh, I mean, it's just it goes on and on and on. We could we could spend eight hours talking about the corruption of the Hillary. Pressure. But I got to tell you what, 
Donald Trump, much more serious that he was caught on tape on the bus. And I'm not trying to I'm not trying to say that that wasn't a bad thing because oh, I think he's a moron. He's a moron for doing it. He's a moron. He's a moron. Come on. Please. You're, you're pushing an issue that isn't there. He's a, it is, a, it go, is there. Why don't we go back to Hillary? Why don't we go back to her family and her son-in-law and when she was Secretary of State and how she went into the European Union and gave uh, her son-in-law some information uh, like insider trading on the euro? It doesn't matter. No, no. It does matter. No. Because it bothers me. It bothers me. I, I think that, that insider trading, she should have gone to jail for a period. And her daughter should have gone to jail. And her son should have gone to jail. Well, there's a lot of people that have gone to jail, but you, the Clintons wanna, don't go to jail. If you want to talk about going to jail, we have a lot of men and women in jail in Massachusetts in this country for rape. And her husband didn't. Right. Well, talk about... Oh, you were, it wasn't sex, though. No. No. Okay. It's a vast right-wing conspiracy. We all remember those code words. Well, you know, it, 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 it's not a good thing uh, for the country to have this, this choice. And uh, these people don't care. They win at any cost. I mean, if you look at the WikiLeaks that came out about a week ago, no one even, no one even read it up in regards to actual health problems. She's got a bad hot valve that's leaking. Okay, she's on Coumadin. Well, I'm on Coumadin too. Yeah, but I mean, you know, all of the, the all of the let's say negative results of of being on some of these some of having some of these problems have have shown up on the campaign trail when she's at the 9/11 tribute and you know, faints and whatever you want to call it passes out collapses. She's she she can't stay awake more than a couple hours at a time. You know she's got serious health problems, well, but we, but we, none of it has none of it has surfaced because guess what the press isn't talking about it and 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 you know what not everybody watches Fox News folks I know okay well we know she doesn't answer the phone at three o'clock in the morning so well we somebody who somebody who does pay attention at three o'clock in the morning. Uh, they they always got an eye on you. Is Michael G. Conway Insurance because his insurance is good twenty four hours a day. Michael G. Conway Insurance agency right there at seventy seven East Merrimack Street, right across from the Lowell Memorial Auditorium. Let me tell you what you need: homeowners insurance, life insurance, any kind of insurance. Is products nine seven eight four five four five zero five four nine seven eight four five four five zero five four. Michael Conway is a great guy. Besides that, he's got a wonderful agency. And uh, I'll tell you what: don't let language be a barrier. They speak all kinds of different languages. Languages down there to provide you with the most superior customer service uh, available uh, throughout the, never mind, Lowell, throughout the Merrimack Valley. And another great Merrimack Valley organization is Allen Act Mortgage Group. If you are looking for a traditional mortgage and the housing market evidently is white hot, you got to check out Allen Act Mortgage Group. If you are uh, one of these seniors who are living uh, paycheck to paycheck, or put it this way, uh, uh, deposit to deposit, uh, living on a fixed income, and you're considering a reverse mortgage, there is no other organization in the Merrimack Valley that knows reverse mortgages better than Allenack Mortgage Group. Michael Allenack, Tom Allenack, Mary, give Mary a call. And matter of fact, if you're a veteran, I got to tell you what, why would you go anywhere else? To check out your one of your benefits, which is a VA loan, you got to call Allenack Mortgage Group. The eight hundred eight eight six four eight four eight eight hundred eight eight six four eight four eight. It's Allenack Mortgage Group. They are a proud sponsor of the JMAC and the Bear Program. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, it's going to be more discussion about Donald Trump, and who knows, we might even get a caller or two. So stay tuned. Welcome back to the best hour on radio, the J. Mack and the Bear Show. I'm George Zaharos, the Bear, and my co-host, John McDonald. Our very special <coughs> guest uh, today is uh, Mary Burns, and we're talking about the upcoming presidential election. And don't forget, tonight we have a real big debate. Let's see who's going to come out of it. Let's see what the spinmeisters are going to do. And you know what? 
I have already made up my mind, and I'm not going to tell anybody. Yeah. You are the bear. A matter of fact, it was it was. Th- th- you know that clip you played, Krista, and with Teddy, the, the Smokey Bear. That, by the way, that by far I think is the best one yet. We, we we might we might need to incorporate that in our show um, eventually, is to have the, I, I still the little like bear the Lone song. <laughs> I still like the Lone Ranger. <laughs> well, we have a uh, we have a caller, and I'm I'm wondering if it's the same Helen Brady that's running for the 14th Middlesex. It couldn't be. There couldn't be more than one Helen Brady around, is it? There is no <laughs> way. Me. She's the best. <laughs> You must, be call- you must be calling. You must have heard Mary's voice and decided to call. Well, if it is Helen Brady, how are you? Hi, I'm, I'm fine. Thank you. I'm just finishing up one of those coffees that oh. the Kennedys made famous back in the day. Oh, very good. And you're yeah. out and about trying to uh, uh, convince people that uh, it's time for a little bit of change uh, in the 14th Middlesex. I presume, I, I think, Corey Atkins has been there for... Like Seventeen years, and she uh, has, she has. So, yes. so, so, what are you going to bring to the table that's different, Ellen? I'm going to bring some new perspective and some of my own uh, life experiences, some business savvy from um, the job I do at the Boston Symphony Orchestra, which is uh, business development, audience development, and marketing, and you know, budgets, things that really matter to me, um, fiscal responsibility, and and ethics. How about some ethics? Ethics would be nice. What's that? Um, and um, uh, it would be nice no, if morals and intelligence came back into fashion. You know what I'm saying? It would yeah, be nice. A little common sense, you know. Everybody has a little bit of it. I feel like you have a lot of it. I'm a mother of four, and I really um, have worked very hard to make sure my kids are um, well informed and and understand some civic responsibility and being part of something and and by running for office they'll see that there are some good people still out there that want to run and my title isn't politician yet and maybe I can make that a a better you know give that a better brand sure yeah no I get it I get it so uh, big election coming up and uh, what um what what just real quick because we you know we got we got we got a line up here. Um, sure. What um, give us give us give us three reasons you're running and why people should vote for you and then we'll, we got to let you go. Oh okay that's fine. So um, people should vote for me because I'm I'm a new perspective, new ideas. I'm a diff- I'm I'm a citizen who's running uh, because not a lot of people seem to want to contest any of these seats. I want to support Charlie Baker's reform. Um, I want to give back to my community. My father was a World War II vet, and he served his country, and he set an example for me, and, and now it's my time to, to give back, and, it, and I can do this. And I think I represent the 14th District um, in a way that's a little different than our, our current rep. Well, very good. We wish you a lot of luck and, and uh, out there in the camp ra- campaign trail. So Thank uh, you. Thanks for letting me talk. All right. You have a good one. Thanks for calling right. in. Bye, Helen. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hey, look, we get, we get political candidates driving, listening to our show, calling in, and uh, all kinds of good stuff. So, uh, yeah, ho- hold on a second. We have, uh, we have uh, been invaded. And, uh, by the way, he is, he is going to be on Friday night, folks. Friday night. Uh, Don't we, go there. Please. No, I'm uh, going. No. I'm. I'm. You, I'm. I'm going there. You, you don't do that in advance, honest. You know how you don't uh, clap for Gold Star. No, 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 no. <clears throat> I'm. I'm making an announcement about what's happening Friday night. You can make an announcement about Friday night. It's going to be a great event. Yeah. But I haven't even. The people don't even know what we're talking about yet. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to. Bring, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hold. No, no, no. I'm going to bring it up real quick because this is important. Friday night at Cauley Stadium. Okay, at 645, there's going to be a ceremony where Veterans Assisting Veterans is dedicating, uh, as a gift to Lowell High School in the city of Lowell, a permanent POW chair, POWMIA chair, uh, in honor of the 91,000 people who have been prisoner of war or missing in action. And uh, there's going to be a Short ceremony. It's going to be at the homecoming game, the homecoming football game uh, of Lowell High School uh, this Friday night. And uh, the person who is helping us with the ceremony, who will be playing taps that night, is our very own Colonel Sam Poulton. It's my high school reunion. You went to Lowell High? 
Why do you say that with such a uh, Because you're the man of Chelmsford. But I went to Lowell, the man of Chensford. Chensford. Those, Chemsford. Of, us, it's those Chemsford. of us that grew yeah. up in Lowell uh, refer Chemsford. to that place as Chensford. Yeah, it's Chemsford. Actually, I very seldom come on the air during your show. Very and, seldom. And I'm sorry that there was something in between. I, I'm, I'm required to come on. Yes. Thank you very much. To now say, I'm Sam Poulton. <laughs> Owner and operator of 980 WCAP. 980 WCAP is committed to upholding the FCC guidelines concerning uh, elections and candidates. Our advertising rates for political <laughs> candidates are the lowest in the year right. as compiled. Right now. And no, I don't mean they're the lowest in the year on sale. We are required to give our time at the absolute lowest rate that's available to anyone in order to encourage free speech and getting the word out. We also subscribe to a policy that within 30 days of an election, we don't have candidates on the air unless they take advantage of what's offered to them. And no harm, no foul, except... I now have to officially say... So, Corey, don't call in if you're driving by. No, if you... <laughs> if you are a candidate for elected office within the uh, powerful range of 980 WCAP, you are now invited uh, to share in equal time. I think we had a little more than two minutes so everybody. So Corey, uh, if you're driving by, please call in for two minutes only. I'm not offering <laughs> this to Corey. I wish I were just offering it to Corey. We're not anyone driving it. by who's a political candidate. Don't call in unless unless no uh, or, uh, or else. Actually, I'm Sam, making it easy. I for know. You. I know. Get in touch with us here at 980 WCAP. Call Sam Poulton. Nine seven eight. Don't call Sam Poulton. Call the business office. Call Jerry. Nine seven eight four five four. Zero four zero four. Before I let you go, Sam, because that, that's a good that's a good announcement. But one so other people one other quick yeah. thing. Also concerning, uh, we had uh, some calls, some pro, some con on your last discussion, and I answered that no one in the room is a candidate for office. Correct. So right, Donald Trump isn't here. <laughs> However. Uh, it would be appropriate to say that um, in as much as there is a debate tonight, um, I want to raise something as an elector. Sure. And uh, if you will indulge me. I'm indulging you right now. A lot of people <laughs> don't understand something. So I want to put to rest uh, the latest gossip that uh, the election will be rigged and fraudulent and there won't be anything that we can do about it and it's too bad. Everyone in the listening audience, understand this. No matter how many people vote for Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump, it won't matter if something is amiss. Because in December, the year that I was an elector, it was December 8th, we actually go to the polls in November, and in Massachusetts, we will vote for 11 people will vote for 11 Republicans and 11 Democrats, depending on how the state uh, apportioned. And Mary Correct. knows there are 11 Republican electors. Right. They are on the ballot, not Donald Trump. Now, Massachusetts did amend their ballot for simplicity because people couldn't wrap their minds around <laughs> voting for the slate of electors. But officially, the 11 Republicans are on the ballot and the 11 Democrats are on the ballot. Now, I don't know the 11 Republicans. I do know one of the 11 Democrats. It's our own Curtis LeMay is an elector. To become an elector is a very long process. It's controlled by the parties. Correct. But one thing you need to be is vetted. You have to be a person of um, reputation and high moral standards, the same uh, threshold as a justice of the peace or a notary public. So there is a vetting process. 
you can't have uh, uh, you you can't be uh, convicted of any kinds of crimes. Uh, blah 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 blah. And then you're elected by the party. Very fierce competition. We had over 30 people running for those 11 seats, and it's a portion, so many men, so many women. I say this because when I was an elector in 2008, from Election Day to the day we assembled at the State House, and all the electors from all 50 states assemble at their state houses at the same time and cast ballots for president, you do it verbally. Then you fill out a ballot, you put it in Massachusetts, it's a 200-year-old ballot box, it's in front of a packed crowd. Are you saying because of this there's no fraud? What I'm saying is fraud, no fraud, rigging, no rigging. Let's just take 2000 as an example. We've never had as contested an election uh, in, in the 20th century as we had in the year 2000. I went to Florida. I was part of the recount. When the Supreme Court said George W. Bush is the president of the United States, that was the supreme law of the land. But for one more thing, those 358, I'm sorry, 538 men and women had to assemble, and they had to affirm that the final decision is in the hands of five. 138 <coughs> men and women, your friends and neighbors, and elected officials and high-ranking, but it's spread out, had three electors of those 538 not voted for George W. Bush. If they felt the election was so wrong and so bad, if Al Gore had asked three electors, and more than three electors offered Al Gore, to his credit, said, no, proceed with the results of the election. We are a nation of law. Law, and then laws on the law, and laws on the law on the law. We're the, I think we're the only place on the planet Earth where a democratic election can take place and have as many safeguards from local polling officials to the various secretaries of state of all 50 states to the United States uh, Attorney General, to the Supreme Court, and ultimately to 538 men and women who are entrusted with actually electing the president. Sam, that sounds, that's the process that gets you there at the end. It's not the vehicle that's going to prevent the fraud that's going to take place on Election Day at the polls. There might be 11 Democrats and 11 Republicans in Massachusetts, but those people weren't there when there was fraud committed at Lawrence City Hall the night of the election when Willie Lantigua and David Abdu ran against each other for Lawrence mayor. They, They weren't the ones that were there when fraud was committed in so many other instances and other elections. It might be the vehicle, the process that gets us there to ensure that we have a clean process from the day of the election, but the fraud that people are talking about and the concern that people are talking about is the fraud that's going to take place with perhaps with electronic polling, uh, different things that are taking place, the lack of confidence that during that day that there won't be 200,000 registered people that are dead voting that day. John, if, if, and I'm, I'm trying to make the point in a nonpartisan way. The radio station has no candidate. The owner may have a candidate. The owner allows the other, uh, the opposition, if you will, free access. I'm going to s- stick to fact, and I'm only going to speak of things that I was personally involved with. 2000, there were charges of fraud. Mm -hmm. Okay? Some of those charges were correct. Maybe not fraud. However, I counted ballots in Florida, and we had to deal with ridiculous made-up things like hanging chads, dimpled chads. i got to tell you, If somebody has a pointed stylus and a paper ballot and they stick that stylus into the paper ballot and because there are so many uh, uh, chads in the receptacle, the stylus can't go all the way through. I never had a problem with that. Or 
there is a Chad that got punched, but it didn't fall off. I got to say that I looked at the ballots and whether the ballot was for uh, Al Gore or uh, George W. Bush, I said, vote. And when we first started doing that, I thought that's what everybody would say. The other guy said, no vote. Why? It didn't go all the way through. I mean, the voter is intent, so I'm not going to go on with that. But that may not have been fraud. It was certainly irregular. We got over it. We, we moved on. As for fraud, I still have a shoebox full of telegrams, emails, letters from people literally all over the country telling me as an elector to do my constitutional duty and not violate my oath and not violate the Constitution of the United States by voting for a man who wasn't a citizen. And, I, I mean, I, I looked at it and I checked it out. And Barack Obama was born in Hawaii and he was a citizen of the United States. He lived in Kenya for a while. Uh, his mother, some people may feel that his mother was uh, born in a foreign country because she was from Kansas. And around here, Kansas might be foreign. But she was from Kansas, so he had an American mother. He was born in Hawaii. He was an American citizen. I, no one in this room said he wasn't. Well, somebody running for office said he was. Donald Trump said he wasn't. Well, it doesn't no. mean that we did. All right. Well, well, wait a minute. I, I, I don't even know. Here's we, where we, that was going. We, we, where where are we with it. this conversation? John, yeah. if I believed that, if I believed that Barack Obama were not a citizen, I had an opportunity to stand up on December 8th, I believe it was December 8th, 2008, and when they asked me to cast my vote, I could have said, no vote. Or... I could have said, I vote for Joe Biden for president. And I'm sure everything would stop and they would grill me. And I would say, in my heart and soul, I don't believe Barack Obama is a citizen of the United States and I can't vote for him as an elector. We are protected. If he hadn't been a citizen, the electors wouldn't have voted for him. So I'm just trying to say that when it's all over, especially in a federal election, and I read an article yesterday where they had analyzed millions of votes, maybe billions of votes, and in a federal election for president found 31, um, you know, fraudulent votes. Fine. So there is, quote, fraud, 31. I think in the next three weeks we need to concentrate on the issues. There's a lot that needs to be done for our veterans for the infrastructure of the United States, for small business, for uh, people that uh, do not have enough pension funds or Social Security because they're on a fixed income to keep up with the rising cost of living, even though inflation is under control. What will happen if inflation begins again, if the Fed begins raising the interest rates? I'm not hearing that in the debates. We're so preoccupied with the entertainment part of the debates that we're forgetting that the man or woman elected president is the only elected official that speaks for every man, woman, and child in this country, and the conversation should be how we can make life better. We may have different ways to get there, but I firmly believe that people that seek the highest office in the land want to make things better. And neither candidate is projecting that right now. And I don't want to have this outlet fuel the media fire and concentrate on... So is this freedom of speech issue right now? No. It, it, I mean, it would be an awfully boring show if, I, if, we, if, if we didn't talk about the controversies John, that have taken place. We didn't interfere with your talking about the controversies. This was prompted by a policy uh, glitch. I came on to let everybody know that we don't let certain people on and not others. And because I have the microphone and I own the station and we're getting complaints, and my answer was freedom of speech. Just as you said, freedom of speech. So I'm kind of using, and that's why you play the, and that's why WCAP plays the disclaimer. We don't every usually we don't every on your show. show. We'll start to do that. <laughs> oh, it's but, played on our show plenty of times. So but, I just, but, yeah. I just want to say, yeah. let's let's all agree that we use the last three weeks to speak about 
Donald Trump's plan to make the country better, Hillary Clinton's plan to make the country better, and how we agree and disagree with their goal and their way to reach the goal. And we, we suspend the bus, the emails, you know, the stuff. But, but the emails are important because of what she has said in them. And, if the and about emails, the American public and what she's done against the country. But, Mary, if the emails are that important, then it's equally important, which I don't believe, that we talk about inappropriate speech and speaking with the microphone on and you got on the bus, you got off the bus, Billy Bush is going to lose his job and get a million dollars. I wish I could get a million dollars for losing my job. I'm tired of that. I know. I know about what Donald Trump does that isn't good. I know what Hillary Trump, uh, what uh, Hillary Clinton does that isn't good. I want to know what it is good that they do. What is Donald Trump's plan to make us better? What's Hillary Clinton's plan to make us better? And let's concentrate on that and figure out if that's where we want to go. That's the way things used to be done. And, uh, you know, we've crossed the line between news and entertainment. I'd like to get back to news. This is an entertainment show, so I'm not directing that at you. I'm saying our news colleagues have kind of crossed the line, made it difficult for you guys, because there's no difference between J-Mac and the Bear and the nightly news. So there I am, Mary. Why I mean, are you addressing this to me? I'm I, just here to talk about the Republican <laughs> viewpoint. Corey, all right, well, let's hear the Republican viewpoint. And, and Corey Atkins, please call in for two minutes. Tell me, what, tell me tell me how the... the uh, I think Donald Trump has clearly said what he wants to do, and every time there's t- talk about issues, Hillary turns it. Well, she turns it. What does he want to do? Here it is. Free mic. All the great things that Trump wants to do without How about an creating jobs? How about bringing back the inner cities? How about making America safe again? How about bringing people back to, you know, good schools and education? Because right now our inner cities have failed. Our people of color have got nothing, nothing, Sam, from the Democratic Party in years. And you can't say they have because they haven't. They're in the same position they have been their entire life because no one cares about them except every four years. Oh, we're with you. We love you. Vote for us. And then see you later. See you in four years. Trump is right about that. Every time he talks about an issue, people people are coming out and saying he's absolutely right. And that's why the people of color and our Hispanic friends and our Latino friends are coming to the Republican Party this year because they are tired. Working people are tired of not having anything for their children to look forward to because there's nothing there for them. This country is in trouble, and if we don't, as a nation, face the fact that we are in trouble, this country is not safe. We get people pouring in without any vetting. I don't care. Believe me, I'm a grandchild of an immigrant. I get it. I'm not opposed to immigration. What I'm opposed to is the fact that no one cares about the future of this country, but Hillary Clinton and her husband have made themselves multi multi millionaires on the people of this country's back and it's wrong and it's illegal and they should be we, they should just, not be running for we, office. We just got and a tad even, off Mary, we just got a tad off track. I was with talk- you I was with you as you were saying this is what we need to do. Now tell me Donald Trump's path to doing that. What is How, Hillary's what is Donald Trump going to do to create more jobs? I'm with him. I want more jobs. Donald Trump has he signs thirty five thousand paychecks a week. What has Hillary signed? What? what has she ever hired? Is there anybody she's ever given a job to? Is there anybody she's ever given a job to outside of government? Explain that no, to no. me. We're, we're getting Ian, back to Ian. Hillary. No. Please, give me a reason to vote for Donald just Trump. Real what quick. is his job? I, I, just, I just, I just want to mention that uh, this uh, was formerly known as the J. Mac and the Bear Show. It's now the Sam and Mary, Mary show. show. Yes. I am tired. I'm listening to people out there. People have shut this off. I am a political junkie, Sam, like you are. And we are tired of it, okay? We're tired of the of the non-issue election. And Donald Trump has come forward and said, I want to do this, this, and this. And every time they go to ask Hillary a question, she laughs it off, ha, 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 like it's a joke. Mary, and she passes I'm, I'm, it on about I'm him. I'm offering you uninterrupted three minutes to give us Donald Trump's plans without mentioning what, what the other go- – What are Hillary's? Look. I'll be glad. What a Hillary's? Give them to me. Okay. God, ladies and gentlemen, give everybody, them to me. I give up. I have offered. See? You I, turn in it, Sam. You I've turn into the Republicans. Mary, Mary, I offered three minutes to tell us all the great things that Donald Trump is going to do without interruption. And I asked, can we do it without Hillary? 
And the answer is, I say, what's Donald Trump going to do? And your response is, what has Hillary done? So What has she? I, has she I, ever I signed said, a private paycheck? Mary. Has the, she ever built anything? The question has is, she ever created a job? The question is, do you not know what Donald Trump is going to do? Is that what the problem is? I've been very clear what Donald Trump is going to do. Tell us. He's going to create jobs. He's going to try to bring back the inner cities that have failed. They failed because they're all on the Democratic mayors, and they have failed. What pro? Is he going to create Perkins grants? Sam, you can't create uh, the uh, federal housing administration. What's he going to do? How much government can we have? How much more government can this nation take? We're oversaturated with regulations. We're oversaturated with taxes. The people are scared to death out there. And whether you want to admit it, the Democratic Party wants to admit it, or Hillary Clinton wants to admit it, we have a problem in this country. And I, as a Republican, yes, but as an American citizen, first and foremost, and a daughter of veterans, and a daughter of an, a granddaughter of an immigrant, I care about the future of this country for my nieces and nephews, who right now have no idea what their future holds. And I'll tell you right now, it's very frightening. It's frightening for me. It's frightening for them. And when this summer, when we're up at Seabrook Beach and the fireworks are going off and my niece goes, is that ISIS? That's a problem. And I agree. And That's it's a, a problem. problem for Democrats Who and created it's a problem it? for Americans. Who created ISIS? Who created ISIS? Who financed it, Sam? It's all coming out now in the emails that you don't want to talk about. Who financed ISIS? Who are you suggesting financed ISIS? Oh, go ahead. you going to laugh it off? Listen. Is this all a joke? Our fa- it's no joke to Mary. When it's, you talk about ISIS, it's no joke to my family, with all due respect. I understand. Among us, we've spent four years in Iraq and Afghanistan. I, and I respect it. Okay. And I and, know your sons, and I respect it. And I'll tell you that Saudi Arabia and Iran and other places like that funded ISIS. You know? I get it. Their, their fellow, uh, their, uh, fellow countries in that part of the world funded them. Not the oh, United not States. Not the United States. Not Hillary Clinton signing off on these documents that are now coming out, but no one wants to talk about. The mainstream media doesn't want to talk what about What we them. need to do to not get J-Mac off the air is you and I need to get on the air for an hour. I'm sorry I took the time, but I hope everybody I mean, when he left this. us. <laughs> we had to. I'm disappointed that I didn't hear Donald Trump's program for the future. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing it tonight. That's why we have debates. Have a good day. Mm-hmm.